Namaste. So let's continue with the introduction to Sri Shiva Sahasranamam. Upamanyu is telling Krishna and the assembled great devotees and demigods and so on that these thousand names came from a set of 10,000 names derived by Lord Brahma and that he churned them like churning butter out of curd to take out their essence in the last episode. And in this episode, he starts to talk about the results of chanting Shiva Sahasranama. Sarvapapmapahamidam chaturveda samanritam prayatne nadigantavyang karyang cha pratayatmana These names remove all committed sins is one with the four great Vedas can be understood only by great effort and should be committed to memory through effort. Problems and suffering are due to previously committed sins. What is a sin? Papa. It means that one has missed the mark, the aim, the target. In other words, one has forgotten God. If you act, even if you do the most wonderful, beautiful things, helping people, giving them food, paying their hospital bills, getting them out of jail or whatever, if it's done with the feeling of, I am the doer, it simply creates more karma. It simply creates another birth in the material world in similar circumstances. Even though it's good activity, it's done in egoism. Every time you do something with the conception that I am an individual and I am the doer and this is my act, this is my effort, see, you put a stamp on it. It's just like when you mail a letter or send an email, it includes your return address. You don't have to put it on there separately. It's automatically stamped on there by the software, or maybe it's already pre-printed on your stationery. Remember stationery? <laughs> anyway, the sender puts their name and address on the message so that the receiver can reply. In the same way, whenever you do something, you create a recording, you create a sanskara in your mind with the stamp, I did this. And this becomes part of your karma. And you have to accept the results of that karma, even if the result is birth in heavenly planets. It's still karma. It still results in rebirth. So, the point is that as long as we do something on our own account, it's karmic. But when we do it on Shiva's account, it's akarma, naish karma, without karma, without reaction, without result, in the sense of a material result that applies to the body or mind. However, the acts performed in devotion as a service to one's deity, instead become liberating causes. You see, they tend to stack up or add up, especially over a long period of time, to liberated consciousness. And how is that? Because all these impressions generated during sadhana or worship or japa or prayer all contain the referent to Shiva. So these holy names should be committed to memory. You should be able to recite the Shiva Sahasranamam from memory by great effort. Huh? When I was a Vaishnava, I memorized the Vishnu Sahasranamam. And in fact, I can still recite most of it today. Because once you commit something to memory, it's like it becomes a part of you. It goes with you wherever you go. 
you never forget it. So one should understand and memorize these thousand holy names of Shiva. Idam bhaktaya data vyang shraddhanastikaya cha na shraddhana rupaya nastikaya jitatmane It is fraught with auspiciousness. It brings advancement. It destroys rakshasas. It is a great purifier. It should be given only to him who is devoted to the great Lord, to him who has faith, to him who believes. It should never be communicated to him who has no faith, him who is an unbeliever, him who has not conquered his soul. Well, what does this mean? Well, it means that the holy name of God is powerful, it's potent, it has agency. It does things. <laughs> and when you take this name, when you chant it or read it or hear about it, it creates impressions in your mind that are causes of spiritual advancement, upliftment, and eventual liberation, moksha. So not only that, it destroys the bad things. Rakshasas, demons, are like the bad thoughts and desires and purposes in the mind that cause us to act selfishly and harm others. You know, whether it's eating a Big Mac down at McDonald's or, you know, getting in a fist fight and knocking somebody's lights out. <laughs> or worse, these acts cause very, very heavy karma. And one has to come back and accept the results of that. Because the acts done in this life do not bear fruit in this life, only in the next. That's how the law of karma works. So now, as far as who should hear and who should know these holy names, it's only for the devotees. It should not be given to those who have no faith. Why is that? Is it to... Uh, keep them away from the powerful names so that they don't get cities or whatever? No, because they're open secrets. Everybody has access to them and everyone can use them. But it's because if the name is uttered without faith or with disbelief or criticism, it becomes a namaparada. That means an offense to the holy name. And these are very dangerous for one's spiritual life. Namaparada is a cause of fall down. So we should do everything possible to discourage those who have no faith from even hearing these names. So if you're searching for Shiva on YouTube, you'll find this video, for example. But if you're not, if you're looking for something else, it won't pop up. And that's good because that keeps the faithless persons from coming in contact with these powerful names and harming themselves by making offenses to them. So broadly speaking, there are 10 offenses to the holy name. And basically, they all boil down to what thing, which is uttering the holy name with any desire other than love and service to Shiva or whatever deity is being worshipped. So try to avoid routine or a low consciousness people and what to speak of reciting these names in low consciousness. One should be wide awake and in devotional consciousness to take these names. Yascha bhyasu yate devang rutat manang pinakinam Sakrishna Narakangyati Sahapurvai Sahanugai. That creature, O Krishna, who cherishes malice towards the illustrious Mahadeva, who is the original cause of everything, who is the supreme soul, and who is the great Lord, has certainly to go to hell with all his ancestors before and all his children after him. So this is the result of namaparad. It's very serious. One has to go to hell. 
So unfortunately, we see many sectarian Hindus who think they're great devotees, but they denigrate Mahadev. So because it's stated very clearly in several Puranas that Vishnu and Shiva are one and the same, they are simply different expansions or different manifestations of the same being. In fact, even Brahma is included in that, even though there's some drama going on with Brahma and Vishnu, still Brahma is the incarnation of the mode of fashion. He's the creator. And Vishnu is simply the maintainer. So they're all divine. They're all not to be offended by any creature. And the word creature is interesting. The word pashu in Sanskrit basically means a domesticated animal. And that's how Shiva is referred to as Pashupati. He's the lord of all these domesticated animals, these two-legged animals. <laughs> and out of them, only a very few actually approach him for devotional service. And of course, this is tragic uh, for them, the ones that don't approach, because they can't get the benefits. So here are some names of Shiva. Bhutatman. Uh, Bhutatman, the Lord of all that lives. Pinakinam, holding the trident. So we'll see as this introduction goes on, he will use more and more names of Shiva in the shlokas until then he goes completely into Shiva Sahasranam mood and narrates all these names, 1,008 of them, which... If we hear again and again, we will automatically learn and become part of ourselves. And this is an important qualification for attainment of liberation. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya. Aum Namah Shivaya. Aum Namah Shivaya.